Hello and welcome to another episode of the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories, an initiative by ET Edge. I'm Ashwani Mishra, bringing to you conversations with CXOs over a cup of chai as we try to discover interesting insights into their personal and professional journey over the years, key lessons learned, their leadership traits, hobbies, and other such engaging topics. I have been joined by a very special guest today, a seasoned business leader with more than 30 years of experience in the natural food and supplement ingredient space, and currently the executive chairman and managing director at OmniActive Health Technologies. It is a pleasure to have Mr. Sanjay Mariwala on the show. I will uh, uh, in, request and invite Ashish as well in this conversation. Sure. sure. Yeah, Ashish, and, this, and I have a common question for both of you. Uh, uh, what were some of the key challenges for your business last year? And how did you overcome them? And, and moving ahead, what are your key IT priorities, you know, digital priorities, IT priorities for 2021? Yeah, you're talking about the COVID year? Yes, last so, year. So yes. We, had a, we had a very interesting year when we started the work and we, uh, we had a board meeting on March 15th, which was just around the time, 20th, around the time when COVID stuck, okay. And we were just all going into lockdown and we had a board meeting and, and three of my directors said, you know, this is going to be the worst thing in the world and you're going to die and we are all going to suffer and everything is going to be bad and the world is going to come to an end, okay. And we said, okay, let's prepare for the worst case scenario. Right. And in that time, we had a budget in hand. And then we looked at our budget and we said, okay, let's throw this budget out and let's recast our budgets. And we said, we'll recast our budgets only for the first half of the year at 50% of uh, its uh, um, uh, 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 or right. 25, And we said 50% and 25%. Put them around here. And, he, and uh, and then we we looked at the numbers from the point of view that uh, uh, if we achieve only 25% of our sales, what will happen? So let's cut our costs. Let's cut, cut our, our numbers. Now we said, which costs are we going to cut? Are we going to surgery, do surgery or are we going to just operate with a, with cost tightening? Right. So we are not going to do surgery. We are not going to let go of people. No, the board said, no, no, you need to get rid of people. You've got to downsize completely. Everything is going to go bad. And I said, no, I had a faith in the feeling that it's not going to be that bad because we are we are in a good spot as an industry. Okay, I said we are not going to do that. We are going to work on figuring out a solution to this. The first thing we did was we went and talked to the government and we got ourselves listed as an essential industry. Because we got ourselves listed as an essential industry, we operated throughout COVID full right. plan and hundred percent of the capacity. Since we operated hundred percent of the capacity, we had some difficulties with with shipping our product because of air freights. Because the okay. airlines had stopped number of right. flights. The ships had started stopped calling. Number of ships calling were less so. So we had logistics problems. But other than that, we virtually had no problems. We ran a task force which worked every day. I headed it. And every week, every week we had a task force meeting. We called it a war room, COVID war room. Right. And we made it work. And we had the best year of our life all of last year. Right. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, any IT priorities that you have, you know, in terms of investment? So IT is a big one for us. We are uh, we are struggling a little bit with our IT teams and our IT priorities. We are we have a SAP in, in, installed, but we are, we are we are not using it well enough. I think we have, my expectation is we should be automated much more than we are right now. Our second major uh, in, uh, investment has been in a CRM. Which we are we are we are starting to get see some results of, but I believe that our IT digitization and our uh, uh, utilization of IT and automation of processes needs to get far more uh, robust than it is today. Right, right. Yes, Ashish. Yeah. So Ashwini, I think very very thought provoking and engaging conversation. I was I was listening to it and and congratulations, Sanjay, for having a fantastic year. Thank I think you. something similar at uh, our end uh, as well. I think around the 20th of March, uh, all hell uh, broke loose, of kind course. of. <laughs> uh, because obviously, we also had a year end, uh, quarter end, and knowing how, how most of the sales organizations work in India, yeah. your billings are back ended, uh, material is coming in, and, and suddenly uh, we realized we couldn't bill, bill anything. Uh, right, so it, it what what was earlier on a pretty good last year obviously uh, took a set back, and then the same thing with Sanjay narrated everyone being pessimistic and all that stuff, but 
sim- similar for us uh, we have had like one of the best years uh, ever uh, i in, as as an it industry and particularly as lenovo we we've grown leaps and bounds and we have also learned uh, a lot of things um, i think uh, prevalently what has happened in customers mind at least for it uh, from an expense it has become an investment because That's people right. now see it uh, necessary uh secondly what we have also seen is earlier people used to be like it used to be something which would maybe with with the it team only but suddenly we saw uh, mds and ceos being interested and now we are seeing more and more engagement on on, on a cxo level because it's not only work from office or work from home for for us it would slowly be work from everywhere and anywhere uh, kind of and as, as sanjay said there is so much it can do in terms of digitization in terms of equipping so we are, we are definitely seeing people adopt it uh, the cultural mindset uh, getting changed and uh, and it's just been uh, fantastic uh, on uh, on that end and i'll also like to invite yeah sanjay you want to i can i can vouch for it i'll tell you we bought 200 of lenovo computers last year okay <laughs> i i was in fact going to say that that uh, we we have been working with sanjay's team uh, the it team is is just great and uh, we underwent the same kind of logistics challenges but i think teams worked with each other engaged with each other to figure out what is the right solution and uh, we were able to deliver that and i'm i'm pretty sure uh, that uh, it it would continue the engagement will continue sanjay before Uh, ashwini maybe hands over the conversation for us on closed doors i i just wanted to ask uh, one thing uh, you talked about uh, the 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 two important uh, times in your life being born uh-huh. and this, when you so when did you discover your purpose as an entrepreneur as a businessman and how did it come about so very interesting you know i was uh, that's a very interesting episode i was in i was uh, i was given charge of a project in which we failed okay and we didn't do a good job of and and i was taught that having failed there and you invested money there now figure out how to recover all the money that was invested in there so that at the end the balance sheet is clean and we are we are whole in some way so we had lost some money in operations but we we had a factory we had machineries and we had a land and everything and we eventually i i was given the charge to close that down get rid of all the labor pay them off complete the whole uh, exit of a transaction and sell the plant sell the machinery and sell the land and and recover money and i came out you know with with 100% recovery so that at the end the the the, the profit and loss and the balance sheet tallied to say whatever we had lost was made up in the in the gains of 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 the land deal that we made and net net we didn't lose a single paisa on this project we learned something in two years but at the end that that came out okay now with that experience my family gave me a responsibility to go to cochin and run a company in cochin okay and that company was not running very well the business was not doing well and i was asked to go and take it over and the first day when i when i got to cochin it was you know kerala kerala had that militant labor unions and and i was get out and they were on strike that day and i was get out for 24 hours and i was 26 years old okay that time i was get out for 24 hours and i slept through that get out the whole night okay these guys were making a sounds they were making noises they were trying to wake me up but i slept through it completely wow my goodness at the end of it maybe two years later we just we figured out that the the union and and at the factory had, had had virtually disbanded we had great relationship we built up a solid communication we got rid of excess people and despite that an increased productivity everybody gained they got more wages but and everybody won ever and this was about this was in 2006 or something like that till now we haven't had a single day's production break in that company 365 days we work we people keep asking me that question saying how did you manage labor in kerala and i said it's easy it's not a problem that with that day is when i discovered that you know i'm capable of sorting out these issues and i think that's what business is all about it's solving problems so business is all about solving problems whether it's customers problems or your your problems or your employees problems it's all about solving problems 